This is a follow on video to the last one and shows more all on a car. We didn't do an unpacking video on this one as we had 13 boxes in from two lots on one day and it was an extremely busy day. It's difficult to avoid reflections off the tanks as our Rift Lake section is basically a tropical greenhouse with lots of natural daylight. This helps grow algae which the Mabuna graze on. This fresh food helps to keep our fish in top condition. Uh, what they call Nyasa electric blues. Nice looking fish. The uh, the vine is going a bit crazy at the moment. Let's tie it up. Uh, it's a small sand grids from a breeder. I think there's a crab rub. Looks like it. Debbie's better up on uh, name in the Nile, I'm afraid. Uh, these are Maylandi sulfur heads and Jacob Freeburgi. They're very, very nice. Some fish we've had in for a while. Uh, there's also some new all the Nakara sulfur heads in there, super heads, sorry. Some tank grits from breeders, some uh, sprengeray and labiotrophius types. A lot of these fish we bred here and raised them on. Only got a few uh, yellow belly alberts left at the moment. Babies growing on the hatchery, constantly breeding. A few more on the cars.
is a beautiful fish. All the caras. Uh, I think these are orange blotch. There's also uh, a couple of white lips left in there, some breeders, and also some bawly eye. There's also a couple of uh, more eye in there as well, I think. Beautiful tank that. The sunlight coming down on it, it shows all the colours up. Beautiful. Some Philander. These came in yesterday as well. We used to breed these at one time. If they stay in the fish airs long enough, maybe we'll breed some more. Uh, that's the jasmine. It's in full flower, it smells really nice. This is the first time it's flowered in uh, three years. Mind as well as doing going crazy. And on this side of the rack, we've got some Walakara new blue orchids. Uh, there's also some West African fish in there uh, called Chilochromis dupontoi. Uh, these are some which we add in from Congo Gabon border. There's only a few in there, but we're growing them on. See if they breed, they don't come in very often. Nice red bellies on them when they get a bit older. Bit of an experiment. Do a lot of that in here. And some more rips. You've got Nairari, uh, there's Omnichromius, Omnicaruleus, I should say. And uh, Trophius in there. Underneath the pot there. Uh, some white spotted doors that seem to be doing quite well with them. Let me show you these uh, plastic vats. Uh, we've got a lot of Demedia chromis trigatus. Uh, we've had a lot of females brooding just recently. Uh, we've had to put these in the, uh, the egg tumbler. They are prone to eating the eggs. But we've probably got, I don't know, well over a hundred growing on, I think, in the vats. Uh, these are all young rifts. This is our new Rift Lake flake mix. We think it's the best anywhere. Just three flake types, spirulina, krill and garlic. The spirulina and krill are made in Germany and the best we have ever seen. The garlic is made in the USA. We have been using this high strength flake for years to help clear the gut and intestines of veggie fish. It's also good at clearing worms and keeping the internal digestion tracts clear. This mix is also really good on live bearers and various catfish. We can do this in small packs or loose packs of 1 kilo and 1.5 kilo. This is also the case on any individual flake listed. We can also pack heavier orders. Orders are sent out in strong cardboard boxes to avoid crushing. Okay, you're going to think this is really crazy. What are we doing with uh, two salad spinners in the fish house? Well, what we're using these for, get the lid off, spawning. Uh, we're just trying them out with some egg layers. Uh, these are neon tetras. And 
and again another pair of neon tetras. We're just using one pair to each container. As you can see the inner basket makes a nice sieve so that the eggs can drop through the grate and fall to the bottom where they can't be eaten. That's the theory anyway. Uh, we tried one last night and just to show you in the back. Uh, they spawned last night. Uh, we've taken the eggs out. You can see them in there. Not a massive amount, there are some infertile eggs in there, it's a first attempt. But it's promising. You just keep them in sunny water, keep them in the dark. A little bit of aeration going. And we'll see what happens. This is a short clip taken through the microscope showing newly hatched neon tetra fry. As you can see the eyes are transparent, after a day or so they turn black. So we've got these are the conditioning tanks. Uh, these are females, various scatterers, and down below uh, we've got males. We separate the sexes, feed them up well on lots of live food, good foods, and after a couple of weeks, put them together and see what happens. We've tried the cherry barbs a few times. They've been uh, a little bit unsuccessful. Uh, we had this problem with them before. These are German Super Reds. We find these are a little bit dip more difficult to breed than the uh, regular cherry barbs. We used to breed uh, emperors. These are black emperors. So we're going to give those a go a little later on. Uh, these are Chilatharina alanine from Wapoga. We've got two tanks of these we brought in from breeders. And they've been going crazy breeding in the mops. And at the moment we've got thousands. Absolutely thousands growing on. Tank around. They're quite small, but I don't think it's here. That's just one tank. There's another four tanks like that, and they still keep producing eggs. Absolute breeding machines. Uh, these are Aphisimian striatum. See the eggs there. Different to see them. We've got hundreds of eggs of these. They're going to be hatching out pretty soon. And the parents are in there. At the moment they're knocking out between 40 and 100 eggs in each day. Mad at the moment. These are the first batch of Therichthys arium. And we're just about to move those onto the system. We've got another batch now which are ready to move in. There's one or two Montezumas in there. Just needed somewhere to grow a few up. Those are the Cephidium, Cephophorus Cephidium. Uh, those are 
be nice and plump. We've already had one drop from them. Got those in the bowls. They should do quite well. It's uh, another tank full of Helleri, Sephophorus Helleri, a toy egg. And down below, yet more black swords. This is another batch of Beric this Arium. Uh, this is what we took photos of uh, previously in previous videos. Um, this is the sum on the bottom quarantine system. Uh, it's just basically being filtered by a plant. Uh, this sucks out all the nitrates. Very efficient. As you can see, there's a lot more baby plants coming up on it. And that is just one plant. Amazing. We've been always experimenting with plants and we're trying these in a different way. Uh, these are two types of swords. Uh, I think these are the Ocelots, Ocelots sword, red, spe red speckled. And um, this is, um, I think that's horizontalis. That's quite a nice plant. It's keeping well. They've been in these bowls for a week now. Uh, you lose the odd leaf, but they're not looking too bad. <clears throat> these few in here we're doing a little experiment with. These are going to go up into the uh, top of the system. Uh, these are, I think, red flames. Too. You see those? We had some. We planted some of the ocelot up on there some time ago, and they've been doing really well. They looked a bit dead for some time, but then they spring to life. Because uh, you can see it, there's a lot of flower heads the stalks and they flower great big white flowers but they only last about 24 hours and then they're gone doing quite a lot of our own plants now uh, this one is a brand new one to us it's called uh, Piptospatha ridleyi and there's some Echinodorus rani at the back, which are red swords. These are a little bit like what we used to get in years ago called Malaysian swords. I don't know whether they're going to turn into that. Have to wait and see. The mangoes are looking good and coming up well. Plants all over the place. And the system's looking good. As you can see, there's Radagesia and Devglatis, two Devglatis annulators in there as well. Having a good time. Some more of our plants. These are Bucephalandra. Um, we've got more of those Malayan swords and some more Bucephalandra. That system's looking pretty good. Some nice Sagittaria. And then we've got some gel pots. Coming up to uh, planting out. That's the new one, uh, Echinodorus Reni. That's a red sword. I had that one before. Let's see how that one goes on. Here's 
saw their cuttings potted up. Hemigraphis, you saw Lobelia, and that's Echinodorus uh, Shingu. Quite a funny plant, it will die off and then it will come back. Uh, Cryptochorines, all sorts of various things. Some nymphoides. These are red flames, red flames roads, cryptocorines, cryptocorines types. It's all experimentation but it seems to be working okay. Some more flame swords there. Some cryptocorine loosings. Time. These are Echinodorus Sinellus, big new chainsaws. And these, uh, these plants regularly flower, little white flowers. As with a lot of these water plants, the flowers don't last very long. This flower is a little, little new, little new discovery. Uh, we have an Indian lady who comes in and brings some potted plants in uh, helps us out with some of the horticulture uh, these are called Indian comfrey and they do put them in the curries like pastes and also they're supposed to be a very good cold relief right now let that one uh, this is some hemigraphis we planted earlier it's just coming in well so that's another Indian plant now, by the way. These are old plants that have come back. There's hydrocottle there. Um, that's some of the hemigraphis type. That's just a bit of microgreen. And you can see how this, I used to call it Singoli or Goose, but it changed this name. This is going absolutely crazy. So there's the, uh, the vine, no sign of grapes this year, but uh, you never know. Uh, it's a bit of a rescue flower horn we have, we got a bit beaten up. So we'd, uh, we said we'd look after him, bring him back, seems to be looking okay. That's another hemigraphis, one there is called Exotica, something new we're playing around with. Pretty little plant, not sure what it is, I can't remember. Purple flowers. You see, it's going to be a bit of a jungle in here. But that's how we like it. These two tanks on the top there, we set them up a week ago. Uh, we needed to move some jewel cichlids. Crevis gusatus. Uh, this is just part of the brood. Uh, it's probably about a thousand fish. These are just two of the tanks. We just moved one of them into a pond. Uh, the unusual thing about these, a lot of jewel cichlids are crossed. You never know what they are or where they come from. So the parents for these came in on our Guinea shipment and they came in from Kindia uh, so we know for sure that they are Gusatus and they came from Kindia so we can carry that population name forward that's quite interesting uh, these have recently been put out in the pots these are Cryptochorine Wendetti uh, some more Wendettis in there this one's been going for some time. It's a nice little white flower on that one. Obviously they won't flower underwater. They look very nice. More cryptochorines. These are Cryptochorine Tropica. We always try new varieties out. This one we've had for some time. This is 
is an old batch, they're very slow growing these. We grow all their plants now uh, the same way that Denil and Tropica grow theirs out of water. Much better way. And then when customers are ready they can immerse them into the water and they will lose one or two leaves as the leaves go from immersed to submersed leaves. But generally they're a lot healthier when they're growing on locally. This is a new addition to the fish room. Uh, we imported these from Germany at great expense. These are called Sivophorus signum. They have been around but it's interesting. We seem to be doing quite well with uh, sword tails so we're going to give these a go again. The secret of breeding the sword tails, they need at least a four foot tank. So we have to devote quite a bit of space to breed of this fish. We got a few clown barbs in. These can be a little bit funny. They came in with a bit of bacterial problems, but we seem we've got that round. And they're growing on okay now. These are beautiful fish when they get big. You just never see them at the full glory. That's probably new since last time we did a video. These are Aplocalyptus spilokan. These are from Nigeria. They're a brackish water killifish. And we've been breeding hundreds of these eggs. We got the eggs just outside here. And let's see there's quite a few hatching out. All those dark spots down the bottom there are eggs which are going to be hatching out very shortly. Let's take brine trips straight away. Quite easy to look after. We just changed the, the bulbs on the UV. Gave it a bit of a clean up. And uh, during the clean up we found one of the pumps was uh, malfunctioning, it was coming on and off. So we decided to replace the whole thing. Um, we've got two 17,000 litre pumps on there at the moment now. Um, because it's a very, very shallow sump, it draws the water away very fast. And we had some problems, so what we've had to do to get over that just move the pump up the system a little bit and put one pump in there and one pump at the end and that way it can take the water flow better seems to be working okay now it's one of those systems that's a little bit uh, sensitive you have to uh, you have to be very careful and make any adjustments on it. It's not the ideal system, as you can see, the top end is right on the limit. It's extremely finely balanced. It's not the best way of doing it, but it works. Right, the short, I'll show you these. These are the Dimidia Chromis strigatus. We've been keeping these for breeding, we've been knocking out quite a lot of babies at the moment. One big dominant man is beautiful. Now we're back with the spinners. Uh, this is the day after. Um, I've already taken one of the spinners apart. Uh, you can see what makes them tick. Just a basic basket a collection tub down there. Uh, we put some neon tetras in last night. Uh, we'll see if they've done anything. Uh, there you go. Neon tetras. 
and sat on some eggs. Managed to go through the grid okay. You're always going to lose a few. Uh, this is their first attempt at spawning, so you might get quite a few infertile eggs at the first attempt. But you've got to start somewhere. <laughs> 